Hey guys, and welcome to a season's how-to guide revisited. It's been several months since seasons came out for PC players, and seasons is just released for console players, and there's been a fair bit of changes since the first release of seasons on the mod hub for Farm Sim 19. I thought it would be useful to do a little revisit of animal care with respect to seasons and how it changes pretty much everything we know about animals. So I'm here on Ballydorn. This is a map that we are currently testing in the channel. And I've got animals here. I've got cows, pigs, sheep, chickens, horses. And I've got the game loaded without seasons because I wanted to basically revisit, if you will, mostly for my benefit, what the base game animal screens look like. Of course, if we take a look up here, we go to our animal screen. Animals are split out by placeable or animal area. Here we have the hill farm cows. I've got 10 animals in each section. Basically, we see that there are 10. We see the overall productivity, the reproduction rate, flurry manure milk as an overall conglomerate for those 10 animals. And then the food requirements as, again, an overall summary of that particular area. The same goes with pigs, chickens, sheep, the other cow area, other sheep area, and then, of course, horses. And horses in the base game, you ride them, you keep them clean. Basically, the more days that you basically ride them, the more value they earn, up to 10 game days at which time you can sell them for a pretty hefty profit. And then you buy another set, $5,000 a piece, and basically go through the entire process again. So what we're going to do now is we're going to jump back into the map with Seasons activated and talk about the changes that Seasons makes to animals. So we are now back in game. I have activated Seasons. And we're going to basically talk about how the animal screen is now different when you activate Seasons. So first off, let's take a look at our main menu here. And you're going to see that the animal screen is now missing from the top here. So that is because the Seasons folks have moved it into their own UI. Okay, So if we pull up the Seasons UI on PC, it is left alt S. On console, I'm not really sure what the command is. At any rate, once you load up the Seasons UI, you'll see that we have the animal icon here. And now we have a completely different, completely reorganized animal screen. So on our far left, we have our different animal areas. This particular map has two sheep farms, two cow farms, a pig, chicken, and a horse area. You can see we have hill sheep farm, has zero sheep in it. Hill farm cows has 10 cows. Ballydorn farm pigs has 10 pigs. Ballydorn farm chickens has 10 chickens. Sheep farm has 10. Ballydorn farm cows has 10. And then the stables, we have two Adelusin horses. Let's talk about the next screen, which is the screen directly to the right of the animal overview screen, I'll call it. This section of the screen is going to show us a summary of our particular animal area. Here for hill farm cows, we have 100% cleanliness, no water, no straw, no food. We have no manure, slurry, or milk production. It just is a brand new game save, so I wouldn't expect to have that. And we have an estimated food requirement of 47,000 liters of food for these 10 cows for the game year. Take a look at the next set of cows and see that we have a larger food amount estimated because we have a completely different breed of cow. We still have 10, but they have a different food requirement because they are a different breed. Next screen over here is going to basically list each animal individually for that particular area. So here we have 10 female cows numbered 011 
0.2020, and they are 904 pounds piece because I just all bought them just before recording the video. So this is the starting weight for a female um, Ayrshire cow. Now the number here is basically the ear tag. Think of it as the unique name or identifier for each individual animal on the farm. So in the Ballydorn farm area, we have 001 to 010. So there's the first 10 cows. And up here, the cow start number start at 11 and work their way up to 20. If you look at the pigs, we have 001 to 010. We have 10 pigs. We buy 10 more. The number will start at 011 and work their way up to 020. Same holds with our chickens, our sheep, and our horses are a bit different. We're going to get into those in a little bit. And then on the far right screen, we have the individual stats for each individual animal. So unlike the main animal screen in the vanilla game, Without seasons activated, you have 10 animals. They basically, they are all the same. They, they all just, they output a specific value per animal. Take the number of animals you have times the amount that each one individual animal eats. And that's how much food you're going to have to provide for any given game day. That's not so easy with seasons now because each breed of animal is going to require a different amount of food. Uh, so each breed of cow is going to require a different amount of food, and they're going to require a different amount of food based on their weight. The bigger they are, the more they eat. They are giving milk, they're going to they're going to require more food. When they're offspring, they're going to require less food until they grow up. But you can see that we have an overall health for each specific animal. We also have an age for each animal, a weight for each animal, and a particular statistic of if the animal is fertile and when the next offspring is going to come for that particular animal. So again, with base seasons or base game animals, if you have 10 cows, they'll produce at some multiplier rate per day. If you have 50 cows, they'll reproduce at a greater multiplier per day. That is not the case with seasons. If you have one cow or a thousand cows, each animal is going to have an offspring based on its own particular schedule. Let's talk about that. Female cows, let's break these down a little bit. Female cows need to be two years of age before they are artificially inseminated, and nine months after that, they will give birth. A female cow will not produce milk until it gives birth. So for the first nine months at least that you own a cow, you're not going to be getting milk out of it. So for this particular game save, okay, we activated seasons and it's early spring we have to wait until at least early autumn before we're going to see any milk out of these animals so we have our male cows which are our limousine and our staller cows and we have our milking cows we have our ashire and our holstein then we have our, our bulls. We have the Brahmin, brown, white, light brown, and gray. You're going to notice each breed of cow basically has a different starting value, has a different starting weight, and as a result, has different feeding requirements, has different milk outputs. You'll see the little help information screen is going to tell you uh, basically. This cow uh, has a low feed consumption and price per head are both too well worthy trade-offs for lower milk production. So 
these cows will produce milk, they won't produce a lot of milk compared to the Holsteins, but they're only $1,300 a head. Holsteins are $1,900 a head. Queen of milk production. So these are going to eat a lot. They're going to pump out a bunch of milk, but they're also expensive. Sallers are a cheaper option. They have high marbling uh, and return a decent investment as far as once you wish to sell them. The limousine cows basically are expensive, but they will grow very fast, and therefore they will give you a pretty good profit when you sell them. See that the male cows, we're buying them much younger, 0.8 years of age and 0.6 years of age, whereas our milking cows, we're buying them at 0.1.9 years of age. Owls will live for approximately 10 game years. Okay, so if you are playing seasons for a total of 10 years at this point, and you still have cows that you bought in the first game year, you need to seriously think about getting rid of those cows because they're going to die on you very, very soon. And whatever money that they're worth is just obviously going to go down the window, go down the drain, I should say. Um, so keep an eye on how old your cows are. Keep an eye on how old your animals are in general, I should say. Uh, for the male cows, I would say sell them when you feel that they are producing, that they are consuming more milk, or not more milk, more feed than they are of value. They will definitely get to the point where they are consuming far more food than you think they're worth. At that point, sell them off. Now, if we think about our value, talk in another video about the season's economy but the animals also have different prices depending on the game month so you'll see cows have a better price in late autumn as opposed to early summer that's just something to keep in mind as to the best time to sell those go over here and talk about pigs I'm um, sorry. Got where the pigs. The pigs, we have two female pigs. So they are breeder pigs, if you will, mother breeds. Then we have two male pigs. These will not produce offspring, but they will basically get very large fairly quickly, and you'll sell them meat see that the female pigs are both at one year of age and they're fairly expensive nine hundred forty five dollars and seven hundred fifty dollars per pig see that the spotted grows relatively fast can be purchased for a modest amount whereas the yorkshire pig uh, grows very fast as as a high amount of capital purchase because they are more expensive but they're going to grow quicker, so they're going to get to a more valuable level faster. See, the male pigs, we basically are buying piglets at 0.2 years of age and 53 pounds apiece. That's why they are so inexpensive. They won't consume a whole lot of food initially, uh, but once they get to be several hundred pounds, they're going to be eating it up like the proverbial pig. Um, so again, at some point, they're going to be consuming far more food than they are worth, and that's basically going to be a good time to sell those. Over here and talk about sheep. Just like we have different breeds of cows, different breeds of pigs, we have different breeds of sheep. Now, interesting enough, all of our sheep are females, but not all of our sheep provide wool let's take a look at the description the dorset sheep are a large breed that grows moderately fast has modest wool production and requires a medium amount of feed as an adult it's relatively prolific and good for 25 to 40 kilogram lambs okay so this is a decent wool producer 
grows fairly quickly, so it'll put on weight fairly fast, and is fairly prolific with respect to its reproduction. So we can expect a decent, decent number of lambs to be generated in a Dorset sheep farm. And we have the Moreno Mer, sheep, is a medium breed that's used for wool production. Grows slowly, not very prolific, but doesn't require a lot of feed as an adult. These are kind of your slow down, your slow paced sheep. They don't get very big. They don't eat a lot, but they also don't reproduce very much. And they probably produce, you know, so so amount of wool, but $423. So they're the cheapest of all of the sheep. We have our Suffolk sheep, the large breed of sheep that grows extremely fast, produces a decent amount of wool, requires a lot of feed, is prolific, and slow maturing. So these are going to gain weight very, very quickly. They're not going to produce a whole lot of wool, it sounds like, a modest amount. They're going to reproduce quite a lot, but they're not going to grow very fast. They're not going to gain a lot of value. That's what I'm reading into that. Then we have our Dorper sheep, the medium-sized breed that grows fast but produces no wool. So if you have a farm of Dorpers, don't expect to get wool out of them. All these sheep are good for is basically get them, get them fat, get them big, sell them for a leg of lambs, and get a whole new breed in whole new set of uh, dorpers in to basically start the process over again. So it's very important to understand what you're going to expect out of each different breed. Again, dorpers will not produce wool. Go over here and check out our chickens. So we have the white leghorn. This is the bird of choice for eggs. Breed requires less feed than any of the other breeds. Five bucks a chicken, but this is going to be the breed that is going to pump out as many eggs as possible. Cornish Cross is a male chicken that you, you buy at zero years of age. 0.4 pounds for a buck. So you're basically buying chicks. The whole purpose of this is to grow the chickens uh, to a decent size. Eight or nine pounds, 10 pounders, and then basically you sell them off to the store. The whole purpose for selling them off is to earn money. These guys, they don't live long. They live about three months, then they're done. So they are a very fast turnaround breed. Very minimal investment, but they eat a lot because all they're doing is eating, they're gaining weight, ship them off to KFC. And you buy a whole new set. Rhode Island Red is another female, the hybrid where they both produce eggs and they gain weight. So you basically are kind of man in the middle, but they're pretty expensive at seven bucks a pop. Then you have your rooster, male rooster. These obviously don't produce any eggs at all, but you need a rooster. Now, this is the only set of animals that you need a male rooster in order to get any chicks, okay? Rhode Island Red and the White Leghorn can either produce eggs or chicks. If you have no rooster in the pen, you're gonna get no chicks, you're just gonna, they're just gonna pump out eggs. You buy a male rooster, about one to eight ratio of roosters to females, then the chickens will stop producing eggs and they'll start producing chicks. At that point, you can either keep the chicks and grow them bigger. And basically then at some point in time, they will start producing chicks. Assuming you have the proper one rooster to eight chickens ratio, keep that up. You're gonna be increasing your, your numbers of female chickens quite quite substantially. Once you have a little less of that ratio, maybe you have one to 15 chickens, one rooster to 15 chickens, 
you're going to kind of get a mixture of chicks and eggs. Okay. So if you want chicks, you got to have a rooster. If you don't want chicks, don't buy a rooster and the chickens will just pump out eggs that you can then collect and sell. So what I'm going to do at this point is I'm going to fire up another game save that is a bit further along. We've got animals of all the breeds that are going to be on all different stages of, of basically life, if you will. And we'll basically be able to see the cows in different phases of being fertile and so forth. All right, so we are now booted up into an Emerald Coast game save that I have that is about a year and a half into Seasons 19 gameplay. And I wanted to show you this one because we have with this animals that have matured a bit. Uh, they're not just brand new, bought into game. So we're going to be able to see the unique individual statistics of each particular breed. We once again bring up our animal screen by going to our seasons menu. You can see on this particular game save, I have 100 chickens. Got 127 cows in this particular area. Got 53 cows in another area. I've got 150 sheep, 140 pigs, and four horses. So let's look at our chickens. These all, they all have the same age. I all bought them at the exact same time frame. See, they're all females, so we have no next animal in because we don't have any roosters. They're just pumping out, pumping out eggs. We have 101 up to 200, and that is because prior to buying the white leghorn, I was buying the brooder chickens, the ones that basically you buy as chicks and you grow them to couple months of age, around eight or nine pounds, and then sell them off. I had a hundred of those before these. So that is why these chickens started a hundred and one as far as their little tag count. Let's take a look here at the cow pasture here. See we have individual statistics as a whole of the cow pasture. This green bar represents this cow pasture is very healthy overall this cow pasture has a slightly lower bar it is basically a little less healthy and that's probably because i don't have any straw in this particular cow pasture so its overall health is lower you see that also represented here by each individual cow has a health of 84 percent go back over to this one See, we have 196,000 liters of manure for this one, 2,197 liters of slurry, 17,000 liters of milk, and these particular cows are going to consume an estimated 836,000 liters of food over one particular game year. Now, let's compare that to these cows. They have no manure and 111,000 liters of slurry. Well, why on earth is that? Well, that is because I'm not providing those cows for all. These cows have very little slurry because I am providing them straw. So that is a very important change in seasons as compared to the base game animals. And that is that if you provide straw to your cows and your pigs, they'll produce a heap of manure if you don't provide straw then they'll produce slurry only okay so it's one or the other not both not anymore so think of it this way when your animals excrement okay when they have their bowel movements uh basically they pile their poo on the ground that poo, for the most part, is fairly liquid. Uh, so if you don't have straw to bind it together, it's basically going to go down the drain. Uh, it's basically going to be collected, if you will, as liquid, as a slurry mix. Uh, if you have the straw to bind that liquid together, then you will have a more solid product that the game calls 
manure. Go back to this information screen, and we're at our large cow pasture, and we can see that we have some cows that go back to 001, the very first Holstein that I purchased in Seasons 19 Play is 1,284 pounds. Up here, I have cow number 251. It's a male Holstein. But wait, Holsteins are a female breed. Well, that is because this is an offspring. This is a bull Holstein, if you will, from one of these female cows. So there is a percentage chance, I think it's like 25%, there's a percentage chance that any offspring uh, from a female cow will be male. This one is apparently male, 185 pounds, only 0.2 years of age, so it's fairly new, fairly young. Let's take a look here. So Holstein 001 is 3.1 years of age, a mature cow. Uh, not, we've got about seven more years of life on this cow before we have to worry about it dying on us, but it is not currently pregnant not been inseminated so we don't have a next animal keep cycling down here oh, cow number four next animal in 0.1 years so we can expect the next transition we're going to get a calf from this particular cow this one next animal in zero year we're going to get a calf from this one any day now keep looking 0.5 years 0.7 7 6 you can see as you play the game, your cows are going to get on this interesting rotation. So you're not going to be getting milk out of all, all 127 cows at any one particular time. Only a portion of your cow population is going to be providing you milk. All of these cows that are pregnant, they're not going to be pumping out any milk at this point. So after they give birth, then they'll start pumping out milk. But then some of your other cows will probably get inseminated and basically they will stop producing milk like this one, 0.8 years. Okay, so this one was just artificially inseminated just a little bit ago. So we've got to go a whole 0.8 years before this one uh, will provide any offspring. Then we have others that are like 0.1 year. So we will get an offspring animal from them fairly quick. That's something else to keep in mind as they reproduce, keep them under animal pen limit. Once you get to your animal pen limit, they won't provide you any more offspring. Same will hold for the sheep. But I think I might be at my 150 limit, so I'm going to need to have to sell some of these sheep off. You can see we have 151 pound sheep, 135, so these are a little bit younger sheep, 116. Even younger still. Each animal in each area will have its own unique tag number and its own weight, its own individual statistics. Now here I've got all male pigs. So these are all just, just fattening pigs. They should all be about the same weight because we bought them all at the same point in time. They're all 383 pounders. We'll probably be thinking about selling these guys off here, maybe the end of this year. Open cow pasture. In my particular game save, this is going to be my bull yard where all my male cows are at. So you can see down here that I have a few male Holsteins. And I've basically moved over. Okay, You can move cows. You can move animals around. This isn't a new thing can move your animals around so I've decided that this particular pen is going to be for my male cows so I will move I will be moving this particular male cow from this pen and I'll be placing it into this pen with an animal trailer at some point in time and let's talk about our horses so horses are completely different in seasons now so over to our horse area. So I can pull up the animal buy information. Okay, I know it's a little bit dark here. You'll see that the horses no longer have a dollar value associated with them, and that's because we don't own a horse. Horses over here, we've had them for quite a while, but they don't have any value to them. 
So the way horses work is they will pay you a kind of a fee. Let me get to the right screen here. They will pay you a livery or stable income, $1,200, almost $1,200. So depending on the breed and the number of horses and the amount of time that you ride the horse on any given day, if you keep it clean, well-fed, straw, etc., then you'll get a livery income per horse per breed. So different breeds will pay out different amounts. Uh, different health levels for each particular horse will pay out different amounts. The amount you ride a horse will cause it to pay out a different amount. You buy the horse for free because basically you're picking it up. Someone else owns this horse. You take care of it, and as a result, it pays you. they pay you money every game day. If a horse dies as a result of you just not keeping up with it, you are fined $10,000 a horse. Be aware, if you have 10 horses... Something happens, you forget to feed them. You die as a result of you not feeding them. $40,000 hit to your bank account overnight. As promised, we are back in the Palidor and Save, and we're going to talk about the water pump at this point. If we go to placeables, animal pins, the water pump, this is a part of the Seasons mod. This costs $5,000, and it costs... Five bucks a day to operate. Money. The way this works is we're going to place it next to the water trough. Okay. I'm going to put it down and instantly you see we have a little bit of water in the water trough. Go ahead and put one down here for our cows. A little bit of water. And for our pigs. Okay, a little bit of water. I'm going to go ahead and do this for the rest of the animal areas, just so none of them die overnight. And now we've supplied all of the animal areas with the water pump. We come up here, we can hear it running. We basically see a little bit of water in there. And what the water pump will do is it will maintain a small amount of water in each of the animal areas. And it's about 15%. Like I skipped the horses area, but anyway. So it will never put more than 15% of the water. So 1,640 liters of water for these 10 cows, 374 liters of water for these 10 pigs at a cost. This is not free. This is kind of an insurance policy, the way I see it. In fact, if we look up there at the money amount, I've added some money in because I had to buy a, a farm area. And if I fast forward this clock, you're going to see that money is dropping. It's dropping because of the water costs. To keep the animals alive basically adding water to the trough the best course of action would be to if you have been known to accidentally forget to water your animals is to buy the water pump as an insurance policy but still fill the water trough with a water trailer on a regular basis water pump will keep the water from drying up that is very, very important to remember. This is not a substitute for watering your animals normally because that is going to get very expensive very fast. Now let's talk about a new function in Season 19 that wasn't available in Season 17 except with an add-on mod. And that is the grazing capability. Take a look once again into our animal area. Look at our sheep. See, they take grass or hay. They have none. Cows have no grass, no hay. So we need to feed them a little bit. But what we need to do is we need to basically get to mid-spring. So we have a little bit of grass growth. But I can show you how the graze mod works. 
let me get you a little let me get a little bit of feed in for these animals that way they don't die overnight and uh, and at that point uh, then we'll basically fast forward to mid spring and I'll show you what the graze mod does so we've got a little bit of food in all of the animal areas now that are going to require it we've got a little bit of hay silage in our cows a little bit of pig food don't have to worry about the chickens it's okay if they die off we have some over here in our sheep again these cows they have hay and silage these cows have hay and silage so what we're going to do is we're going to fast forward to tomorrow and what we're going to have here is we're going to have basically some grass growth in the animal pen it's going to then allow us to see how the graze mod functions or the graze functionality We're into morning at this point. Pull up our animal screen. See we have zero grass. Grass is pretty low. Zero grass in this pen. Okay. Let's just let this run for a little bit. Oh, we just saw right in front of our eyes, literally, we saw the grass grow. Now, let's check the screen. Still don't have any grass. Still don't have any grass. Still don't have any grass. We're going to let it run for a little bit. And then we'll check and we'll basically see almost literally before our eyes. We'll see grass pop into these water, these food troughs as a result of the graze mod. Fast forward time just a wee bit. So you can see now 1036 some time has passed but now we have full troughs and if we check it you're going to see our cows have full grass almost 18,000 liters of grass our sheep here have 1400 liters of grass and these cows over here they have 12,000 liters of grass so as far as the health indicators go for our cows it is full see the water pump has maintained the water levels here what the graze mod is doing is it is basically looking in the animal pen and assuming the animal area has been prepared properly to work with seasons then it is detecting cuttable grass in the sheep and cow area and it is cutting the grass if you will it's pretending these animals have eaten the grass and it's basically then providing automatically grass from the animal area to the animal trough for food basically for grass this works as long as the total number of animals in the animal area is lower than the amount of grass that can basically sustain that number of animals for that particular area so in these examples we only have 10 cows and 10 sheep apiece but if I went and had a hundred sheep that might be a different situation you might find a situation where we have cut all of the cuttable grass in the animal pen and we still can't keep up with feeding our sheep in that case we would have to supplemental feed our sheep during the year but if we keep the proper balance, then we only have to feed our sheep when we don't have cuttable grass. When is that? We don't have cuttable grass in the winter, and we don't have cuttable grass in the very first part of spring. So what that means is if we keep our animal population under control, then for sheep, possibly even cows, if you're okay with having a little lower milk production, a little lower reproduction and weight gain, it's possible to not feed your sheep or your cows 
from mid spring until the end of autumn because they're going to be consuming grass directly out of their animal area Again, that depends on having animal area properly configured with seasons the number of animals in the proper animal area to support the amount of grass in the animal area and the fact that we are in a point in time of the year where we have cuttable grass so both of these animal areas are fairly large for the 10 sheep and the 10 cows that I have of course if I had 50 cows over there uh, this would probably be a completely different story where cows would have basically mowed down all of the available grass and there would be no available grass to continue to put into the trough fine balance tell you this cow pasture I'm not going to put it down I'll tell you this cow pasture is not going to be able to support a hundred cows with the amount of grass that is available in that little old, little old area but cow pasture of this size will probably be able to easily support 25 25 cows maybe even 30 cows it's hard to say fine balance takes some experimentation to figure out where that exact limit is and at that point as long as you have it well balanced like I've said you could go a fair chunk of the year without having to feed your cows or your sheep you just let them graze off the pasture so guys I hope that clears up some confusion gives you some information related to how seasons has drastically changed animal gameplay uh, as compared to base vanilla if you got any questions go ahead and drop them in the comments and until next time happy farming